Pretty emotional day where I just didn't do anything because it was just one of those days, you know. I didn't see any, any vlogs or anything for me today because I just basically stayed in my hostel because my whole phone situation was stressing me out, and I was just like, I don't feel like mentally having the energy to go out and everything. I'm feeling much, much better now because I felt like quite shit <laughs> earlier, but you know, it's just. One of those days why I didn't really film because after I found out like the Apple store that I went to wasn't an Apple store and they couldn't fix my phone I just like was like started crying I was like <sighs> Like I know it's a first world problem. I absolutely know it's a first world problem But you know being in a different country when I really really rely on like using my phone to book hostels and maps and stuff, It was just like very very stressful And so I just sat in my room my hostel room and watched Netflix and stuff and took a nap because I was just like mentally exhausted and from crying and just being emotional when I Skype my mom and everything. But you know, that stuff happens, I think, when you're in a new country and you're by yourself and you have to rely on you and you alone. So, you know, just wanna let you guys know, like, that's not an issue if you have that when you're, you know, that's, that's not something to be ashamed of if you're like traveling by yourself. Like, have that emotional day and then, you know, get back on it tomorrow, which is my plan. Hey guys. In Prague again today, feeling much better today. I actually feel like doing stuff. So um, I left my hostel, checked out of my hostel. I'm still being in Prague a few more nights, but I'm moving to another hostel that's closer to the city center. It was too far from everything. But first off, I'm gonna go see if I get my phone fixed. They don't really have like Apple stores where you can just like take it in. They have like kind of like authorized people, so I'll probably have to pay. But I just like need to figure out what's going on with my phone. But first off, I'm kind of hungry and there's food right here, so maybe see about getting food from one of these places. Well, that was a giant bus. Um, they basically, in very broken English, just told me that I need to try resetting my phone, <laughs> like wiping it clean. Uh, and I was like, you can't look at it to see if it's like the Wi-Fi antenna. And they said they'd have to send it off for five business days. I'm like, is there anywhere? Because <laughs> I'm like, in America, you know, they're like, no, this is Czech Republic. It doesn't happen that way. And I'm like, cool, great. Gonna have to reset it and hope for the best. And now I need to find some Wi-Fi to get on my iPad so I can figure out where my hostel is because I kind of forgot to, to do that before I left my other. Pretty sure I figured out how to get, get to my hostel. I hopped on a tram, got off. Now it should be this way over here because on the map shows it's by a park and well, I'm at a park right now. Charles Square, it said. Pretty flowers. Nice little park. In the middle of the city. It's cool seeing lots of different kinds of dogs here than you really see in America. It just must be like different kinds of breeds. This is where I wanna be. I wanna be where I can walk around and there's things everywhere to look at. I don't wanna be in an area of town where there's not really much to see, even if it is a cool hostel. I prefer being in the center of the city. Okay, so went to the hostel, got some food, and now I'm gonna take a walking tour to see Old Town and New Town and kind of get bearings in the city. The very first uh, tribe that settled here was a Celtic tribe which settled around 400 BC or so and they're called the Boi. So the Boi settled here and then they were followed by the Marcomanni which were a Germanic tribe followed by Slavic tribe which gave us uh, the Czech language. Um, throughout time they end up from the Boi to Boiheim and the name changed all the way up to Bohemia. You guys heard of Charles IV before? Yeah. yeah. So anyways, Charles IV, if you haven't heard of him, he's the reason why we're all standing here. Uh, he's the one that made the city look the way it did. He was a Holy Roman Emperor. Uh, he did study under the, uh, the, his uncle, who was the king of uh, France at the time. And while he was studying under him, he came back to Prague and realized Prague was just not where it's meant to be. He decided he's going to make it something amazing. So when you see the Holy Roman Emperor, he ended up giving us the Charles Bridge, the cathedral inside the, inside the castle, the St. Peter's Cathedral. That was thanks to him. All of Newtown was set, uh, settled by him. 23 new churches in Old Town alone. Okay, so he basically made the city. If he wasn't going, we wouldn't be here as well. Uh, he was officially voted as the most important Czech character in all of history. Uh, they did vote him that on TV, so it's up to you to really decide if you want to get into there, playing there with a the remote. But um, he, well, he is considered the most important Czech person in history. Uh, three beers per person, per day, all year. That's including infants, child, 
pregnant women and people that don't drink at all. <laughs> oh we drink a lot of beer. <laughs> We're coming up on the astronomical tower and the our church of tin, something like that. <laughs> Tyne. All right, Tyne then. That sounds that sounds right, uh, more right. And this is the the old square, I think. Oh, there's the there's the church. Right over there. I think it's unfortunate uh, bad reviews, but uh, I hope that I can do you at the end of this stop you will not come so as well. Okay? So it is twenty-four numbers going around and what number is the hand pointing at? Eighteen. Eighteen. It's not six o'clock. What's going on? Well no, that's old check time. Old check time works in a slightly different way. Old check time, 24 being midnight, is actually sunset <laughs> yesterday. So 24 is sunset yesterday, it's done about 18 hours since the sun has actually set. And it's gonna set in another, gonna set again in another six hours. Ah, uh, okay. okay. So it's off by a little bit, but they just have a different way of count counting time, okay? Also a pretty cool legend that goes about the guy that built the clock. The guy that built the clock, he built this clock and he was so proud of it and he absolutely loved it and he wants to go and recreate it elsewhere in uh, Europe and spread throughout other cities. Unfortunately, the leader at the time was not exactly happy about that and he didn't want him to build it anywhere else and he wanted Prague to be the only place to have this clock. So, um, they got into a little bit of an argument, they, they had a little bit of a disagreement over this subject. Uh, the clock maker ended up going home and uh, trying to have going to have dinner. Soon enough, he gets a knock on the door. Two soldiers come into the room. They pop his eyes out with a couple spoons. Oh! Is hung off and say, "Now this way you will not be able to recreate the clock anywhere else." So, as a revenge, what the clock maker did, he comes in. You can't see it right now. The little door right underneath the calendar. Pop and then he walks right into the he walked right into the the clock mechanism, moved the piece, jumped into the mechanism, and destroyed it. His belief was that anybody that would try to fix their clock would end up in the mental asylum. So two people tried to fix the clock, and they ended up in the mental asylum. A third man came around. He did successfully uh, fix the clock, uh, but again he ended up in the mental asylum before the end of his life. <laughs> So the clock is very, very complex. Um, it still does run on three quarters of its original parts. Okay, three quarters of its original parts are from the first grade in 1410. So it's really quite impressive. So this is all of Old Town Square right now. It's actually very crowded for being shoulder season and not summer season. When you read it, you can just give me. It's really general. Yeah, yeah. So this building here actually used to go all the way down to the church over there. It was one of the few buildings that was actually damaged in World War II. When they were getting liberated, there were holdouts in here and so it, it got burned down. So they left up part of it though as like a memorial monument. The Mozart premiered two operas out of this opera house right here, which is pretty cool. Performing The Marriage of Figaro, the time I'm talking about. So The Marriage of Figaro didn't go down very well with the Viennese people. He didn't get the response from the people that he really wanted. So what did he do? He came up to Prague and he performed the marriage of Figaro from Prague. Um, he went to this, uh, into this state theater and he performed it. At the end of the show, he got a 30 minute standing ovation. Wow. Yeah, man. This is the, uh, do you remember what he called? <laughs> he said this tower is called. Uh, some tower. Oh, the gun, the powder tower. Or, or, yeah, because they, they stored gunpowder here, something like that. And this is the way the king the king would start under here and walk up to the castle to get crowned. At the very top you see that's Franz Kafka. That's supposed to be Franz Kafka taking control over the taking control over where he's going and when he's what he's going to do. So he's basically him taking control saying I'm going here when I want, where I want, and uh, taking control over his own life. So we've now moved into the Jewish quarter. And their synagogues and it was walled off for a while, quite a while, and like in the 15th century, so when only men could leave and women and children couldn't. And then in like the 18th century, a ruler came and wanted more freedom for them. So this Jewish quarter is very well preserved, which you know is a surprise since Hitler came and took over the Czech Republic, or at that time, Czechoslovakia. And so their theory as to why Hitler kept it so well preserved and didn't burn it like, and raise it to the ground like they did a lot of Jewish quarters is because he went to an area that was like preserved as like, here's what Jewish people lived like that don't exist anymore, so. 
That's good. That's something. So we just finished the walking tours, about a three hour tour. Great, Get, got to see the old town, new town, the Jewish quarter. Really cool tour. And now gonna go to one of the cool underground pubs with my friend that I met at my hostel today, Sam. Woo -woo. She's staying at my hostel so, and we did the tour together. So it's been fun having someone to like talk to. Did I look cool when I did that? Did I look cool? I honestly didn't. <laughs> Because I, I, flipped, I flipped the screen this way to get you, so I didn't actually see you. So yeah, I'm just gonna go to these cool, I'm so excited to go to this like cool pub. Because like, that's what I know. Prague is known for their cool ass underground pubs. And I really need a drink. <laughs> Do you need a drink? Yes, we need drinks. <laughs> I think we found it. This is the one the guide recommended. Oh, uh, yeah. Bigger than I thought. I thought it was just that tiny room over there. Watch your head. It's crazy. Guess let's just sit over here. So me and Sam are drinking beers in this bar by ourselves because <laughs> they just opened. Because <laughs> so, we just finished with our tour, and I was like, I want to go to one of the pubs, and I think our tour guy like. He gave me the name, but I don't think he expected us to come right now. But it's cool because we get to look around with no one else here. I don't even, we just ordered beers. We didn't even say what kind. We're just like a beer. So hopefully it's good. I'm not a huge beer person, so. That's good. Tastes like a Pilsner. Probably is a Pilsner. Yeah. So yeah, super cool bar. Popo. And fun to say, Popo. <laughs> And then Sam's going on a beer tour that I'm not going on. So just walked her back and heading to Charles Bridge, and it's by where she was meeting up for her tour, anyway. So we just walked back together. And now I'm gonna head over to the Charles Bridge, which I am so excited for. It's like obviously one of the top places to go to in Prague. And it's almost sunset, so it's probably gonna be really nice too. Yeah, so there's this pretty, looks like um, a church with like apostles and stuff on it. But here's the Charles Bridge, guys. Okay, I need just the lighting because you can't see it with the sun. There we go. Here's the start of the Charles Bridge. Here we go walking the Charles Bridge, guys.
forgot to mention, it's finally been like pleasant weather. Like yesterday, I was able to wear sandals. What? And today, I'm in just like a light jacket. It's just like a little breezy. It's probably about 65, 70, which is like so warm compared to what it's been while I've been traveling. Like, let's hope this weather holds out. Does see it might rain though, but as long as it's not super cold, it's, it's all good. So looking for the John Lennon wall right now. Crossed across the Charles Bridge to the area where the castle is on. So he said turn right and then turn left. I don't actually know what this looks like, so I don't know really what I'm looking for, but it's a very beautiful area of town. So it's not like I mind walking around at sunset. It's, just, it's gorgeous here. I love these little areas so much of the cobblestone and just the old beautiful buildings. Like this is what I love seeing because it's so different than anything in America, you know? We don't have cities that were built, you know, eight centuries ago. Everything's so new. I think I found it. I hear musicians and I see like a wall. I'm pretty sure that's it. Cool. It says the Beatles with all done with Beatles. to the John Lennon pub. Yay, more beer. Wow, man, I swear these, these locks on bridges are coming up like everywhere. Like it, it's a thing in Paris, but it's like they're starting them like everywhere now. John Lennon pub, woo. The Yellow Submarine, one of my favorite movies. Oh, it's beautiful right now. Absolutely beautiful. Wow, there's a lot of swans over here. Oh my god, look how stunning the bridge looks right now. They were so right, that sunset is beautiful. The rain's starting to definitely come down a little bit more now. So I'm gonna quickly Walk over to the restaurant, so I'll pull my umbrella, and then hopefully the rain will stop by the time I finish eating. So this is the Italian restaurant that was recommended to me because it has great views. Right on the river. Just got my meal, so it's at an Italian restaurant. I have some drinking some prosecco right here, and got some linguine with shrimp. Great. So I just got double dinner and came out of like the area I live in. As soon as I start to go upstairs, I can hear and see how much is raining. Do you hear that? It is coming down, son. Like, look at that. And I'm at least like a 10 minute walk from my house, 10, 15 minutes. I think I'm gonna take a taxi. <laughs> Cause it's like really coming down and I don't really feel like walking in the rain. So a taxi, I think it is. All right, let's do this. Woo, it is coming down. 
Jesus Christ, it is like coming down really, really hard. It didn't get better while I was inside, it got worse. It's rained a good bit while I've been in Europe, but not this hard. It's not worth it walking back in this weather. Oh.